you know, you brought it down to 3% uh, world growth. Tell us why you did that. So there were a few factors. One factor are the rising trade barriers and the continued geopolitical and trade tensions. But then there are a couple of other factors, which is uh, kind of country-specific factors in emerging market and developing economies, and also structural forces, which are low productivity growth, aging demographics, and advanced economies. So these three factors are responsible for this. How much is trade responsible for what's going on? If you look at the downward revisions, uh, trade starts playing a bigger role. Now, there's this general slowing that we're seeing in the global economy, but our revisions seem to be driven more by the trade side. Now, I mean, our estimate is that all of the U.S.-China tariffs, the ones that were put in place in 2018, the one that announced, would reduce it by about global growth, by global, the level of global GDP by 0.8% in 2020. Uh, what's a recession when it comes to the world? You don't get much lower than three around here, do you? So once you start going lower than 2.5%, that's usually a scenario where several economies are in recession. So 2.5% tends to be a number that people would associate with a very weak global economy. You, you guys are pretty worried. You called it a synchronized global slowdown, and you talked about the possibility of needed coordinated international uh, efforts. What, where, are, where are we relative to that? Are we close to needing that right now? We're not there yet, uh, but we do think that uh, things have to be put in play, if, and especially if things get worse. Uh, we know, we remember, we are projecting a recovery in 2020 to 3.4%, though we, we say that that is precarious. Uh, but it's important that fiscal policy starts playing a bigger role. I think monetary policy simply just cannot be the only game in town. What does a coordinated international response look like? It's usually a case I would describe as a synchronized move, which would be where most uh, major economies in the world, the ones that have fiscal space especially, uh, undertake fiscal stimulus. Now, this happened way back in uh, in around 2008 or 9, when you had the last great recession. Does everybody also cut interest rates further? So you do want monetary policy and fiscal policy to do, move in the same direction. Now, many countries already have eased quite significantly, so the space that exists is not that as big. Uh, but you certainly want them all moving in the same direction. Could the U.S. go to negative rates or zero? Well, we certainly have... Technically speaking, there is more space to cut rates. I'm not saying that that's what they should do, but that's the space exists. I mean, we'd have to wait and see whether we get towards a negative territory. Uh, this rebound you talk about, it doesn't come, though, from the advanced economies. It comes from the emerging markets, right? You don't really expect much from Japan, the U.S., or Europe next year. That's right. I think uh, if you look at uh, Japan, even China uh, and the U.S., they are going to continue to slow in 2020. So that's not where the recovery comes from. It comes from emerging and developing economies. Half of it comes from recoveries or shallower recessions in stressed economies. This would be Argentina, Iran, Turkey. And about the other half is from a bunch of countries like Brazil and India, where growth was particularly weak in 2019. India got whacked in your forecast. And you're from India. Is it a personal thing? <laughs> I try not to take it personally. But, yes, we did have uh, a significant downward revision for India to 6.1%. Uh, now we do expect a recovery back to 7% in 2020. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the risks that are out there. You're concerned about financial stability when it comes to lower rates. Um, is, and also when it comes to greater trade restrictions. Is it possible that the trade itself could put the world into a recession, the trade restrictions and the tariffs? If this continues and if it escalates further, I mean, it's, there are many ways that it can become more severe, uh, then we're already in a situation where investment is incredibly weak, manufacturing is very weak, and trade is very weak. But that could start spilling over to the services sector, which has so far held up. And that's when we would start worrying about going below 2.5% global growth. So, Gita, four world economic outlooks, and you've downgraded each time. That is correct. Do you think you might have one coming where you might upgrade eventually? Well, every time we put this out, we, we flag the downside risks. Uh, and unfortunately, the last uh, four times, those downside risks have realized in some form or shape. So we would continue to say that if you don't, if policy gets it right, then we should see a recovery.